Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us at tonight's public hearing. I'd like to introduce myself, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dennis Chagru. I'm the Deputy Commander for Los Angeles District Corps of Engineers. And on behalf of the Corps, I welcome you to tonight's public hearing. The applicant for this project, Marina Del Rey Boat Central LTC, has applied to the Corps for a permit under Section 10 of the River and Harbors Act. And that is to construct a new boat dock system uh, and dry, tap, dry stack facility. Under our federal permit program, the Corps of Engineers is responsible to regulate dredge and fill activities in what's known as waters of the U.S. And that's under Section 404 of the Clean Water Act, as well as work within Section 10 of the Navigable Waterways. That's under the River and Harbors Act. So for everyone's awareness, the, the Corps, the Corps of Engineers, is not the only agency with regulatory review over this project. The California Coastal Commission, the Regional Water Quality Control Board, and the National Marine and Fishery Service have also reviewed it. Um, what we do is we evaluate potential impacts caused by the proposed project prior to making a permit decision. We issued a public notice for this on March 2nd for public review and comment. We're in that period right now. And we continue our effort to accept comments on the proposed project from the general public. Uh, we'll clarify, we'll carefully consider all comments prior to making our final permit decision. And uh, even following this meeting up until May 20th, uh, you're welcome to provide written comments, which also become part of the record. We weigh equally comments received verbally tonight and those written comments. Uh, I think we've said it as you came in the door, but if you do want to speak tonight, I ask that you fill out a speaker card at the front table here. We want to hear from you. But before I begin, I also want to introduce the team that I have with me tonight uh, from the court. To my right is Mark Cohen. Mark's the uh, Deputy Chief for our Regulatory Division, and also in the Regulatory Division to my left is Bonnie Rogers, the uh, Project Manager for this permit. Tim Jackson, seated at the table here, is our timekeeper. And then on the uh, side table, Major Pete Sambersky, he's gonna help uh, orchestrate speakers. Uh, to my far left here is Denise, she's our stenographer for this evening. When you do come and speak, I ask that you speak slowly and clearly because we are capturing that to the best of her ability. At the table, Dan Swenson. Dan, say hello to the crowd. Veronica Lee. We have uh, Jessica Vargas. Sherry Shiflett. Lauren Sullivan and Jacob Boer, a computer from my public affairs office, is also here. What I'd like to do is uh, give a few minutes for our applicant to present the project. Good evening, uh, Deputy Commander Seguru. Uh, my name is Roger Van Wert. Uh, I'm a consultant for the Boat Central project. We appreciate the Corps' efforts to review the Boat Central application and want to specifically express our appreciation to Ms. Rogers for keeping us up to date on the status of the Corps' analysis as Boat Central seeks a permit to install the waterside facilities uh, for the project. Um, through this presentation, I would like to discuss three elements uh, of the project uh, that I think are key to understanding it. First is Boat Central is an integral component of the plan to expand the recreational boating opportunities in Marina Del Rey. Two, Boat Central is the most environmentally efficient way to provide waterfront recreational boating access to the public. And three, I will provide a description of the waterside facilities uh, being proposed by Boat Central. First, regarding expanding recreational boating. Boat, Boat Central is a key component to the implementation of the adopted Marina Del Rey Local Coastal Program objective for recreational boating in Marina Del Rey. 
Both Central represents the largest single expansion of small boater facilities since the inception of the marina. Boat Central adds a significant capacity for small boats, 375 new spaces, representing a 7% increase in the total number of waterfront berths available in Marina Del Rey. In addition to just numbers, Boat Central offers a unique set of features for boaters seeking waterfront access. Boat Central will meet the needs of a broader boating community than is currently addressed by the wet slip marinas and the open area dry storage facilities. Specifically, those boaters who wished to reduce boat maintenance time and cost commitments or who do not have the free time, families with children, physical capability or proximity to Marina Del Rey to properly maintain a boat in the water. In other words, those boat owners who would find attractive the show up and go convenience offered at Boat Central. Dry stack storage is an environmentally superior option. Boat Central provides a significant increase in waterfront boat recreational boating capacity while using a, only a small fraction of the water of a similarly sized wet slip marina. It would take approximately three acres of open water to accommodate the same number of vessels that Boat Central uh, uh, that handles with a waterside footprint of only 12,000 square feet. Uh, could you rotate uh, that so that the uh, commander can see it for me? Thanks. Um, this is our water site footprint, which is just under, just, uh, under 12,000 square feet. In addition, water quality impacts associated with wet slip marinas are virtually eliminated. So the dry stack storage preserves open water for recreational boating. The result is the dry stack will reduce potential environmental impacts while expanding recreational capacity within Marina Del Rey. What is Boat Central requesting? The dry stack storage facility, uh, in the, the blue here, um, utilizes a gantry crane system, which bridges the seawall to allow the crane to transfer vessels to and from the dry stack and the water. Boat Central is seeking a permit to install the following waterside elements. 22 48-inch support piles for the dry stack structure and the gantry crane, which extend 97 feet into the water. However, please note that the dry stack structure is set back more than 100 feet from the parcel 52 waterside boundary. There is no encroachment into the Basin H channel. In fact, the overwater portion of the dry stack storage is less than half the extent of the adjacent uh, uh, marina, wet slip marina docks uh, in, ba in Basin H, with respect to Basin H. Boat Central uh, will also be supported by over 5,600 square feet of new docks and pertinent access ramps, which will be anchored by 32, up to 32 14 to 16 inch concrete piles. These are our docks, and there's an access ramp there. These queuing docks allow for the temporary storage of vessels prior to their departure and to allow for the immediate docking upon returning, or the boat vessel returning to Boat Central. There will be no queuing of Boat Central vessels in the Basin H channel. There are no wet slips at Boat Central. There is also a jib crane uh, which will support the sheriff's dock and the mast up storage. The jib crane <coughs> is here. These are the sheriff's docks, and th this area is will be the mast up storage area uh, for uh, those types of boats. 
There has been concern expressed in the past, and I'm sure you'll hear it tonight, as to whether the boat central facility would encroach upon the function of the adjacent public launch ramp. You can see here the three uh, uh, boarding float fingers that come off uh, the, the public launch ramp, which is supported by a very large parking lot to, to the east. Uh, this concern was specifically reviewed by the Regional Planning Commission. The Coastal Commission uh, analyzed in a report contained in the Certified Environmental Impact Report for the project, and specific conditions of approval were applied to ensure there would be no adverse impacts. I would like to draw the Deputy Commander's attention to the separation of the launch ramp uh, boarding floats, which is about uh, actually, it's less than 50 feet. I went out there and measured it today. It's 46 feet. Compare that distance to the closest boat central dock, which is 74 feet distant at only one point. These facts argue that it is not reasonable to say that the launch ramp functions that the launch, launch ramp functions well with less than 50 feet of separation between the floats and boats on each side uh, of that aisleway in peak times, but that Boat Central somehow would impact the launch ramp function when it is substantially further away and not in the, the path of travel for boats entering or leaving the, the public launch ramp. Also, I would like to note that boat, the Boat Central dock system can provide, when required by the Coast Guard, and emergency safe harbor anchorage for dozens of boats. Finally, the design scale of this project has been assessed and documented and approved by the Department of Beaches and Harbors, the County Regional Planning Commission, and the Coastal Commission, uh, vetting it through 14 separate public hearings over several years. And these appro approvals have been supported by a certified environmental impact report. I believe these facts would um, allow the court to grant the permit that we are requesting. This concludes my remarks, and I want to thank the staff for its time and consideration of this request. We're going to open up for public comment. Uh, I want to clarify before we do um, what this is and what this is not. There is no decision yet on this proposed uh, permit, nor will there be a decision tonight, it's not the purpose of this hearing. Or am I really readily prepared to answer and discuss every issue that you bring up? The, the purpose of this hearing is for that, it's to hear the comments and get them into the record uh, for consideration from our regulatory staff. Um, we will be taking oral testimony from the public in the order that we've received your speaker cards. I think we have an order, at least the uh, first few. Uh, we're going to ask that you keep your comments to a three-minute time limit. I do have Tim here who's going to keep a timer on you. At three minutes, you see a light, I think, on the podium. Right. Three minutes uh, for individuals. So you'll see your light come up. If you hit four or five minutes, there's actually an eject button that Tim has to <laughs> launch into the water. So uh, again, all oral as, as well as written testimony does become part of the administrative record for this permit application. Uh, once we have the written transcript of the testimony, copies may be viewed at our office or purchased. Again, when we take testimony from you, speak clearly and slowly so Denise can, is able to hear and transcribe everything that you say. Would you consider putting a copy at our local county library? Yeah, I think we can accommodate that, it sounds like. Uh, we have 19 speakers. Okay. Three or four groups identified. Three or four groups. Hello. I'm Christina Costantini. I'm here with a very simple message that less is more. I was, I've lived here all my life. I remember all the hearings over the development of Playa Vista even. And now we do have this these buildings everywhere, but we don't have the open skyline. I miss it. And I live here in the marina. I'm a homeowner. And, you know, I'm raising young children. I didn't have a babysitter tonight, but I wanted to have the conversation with them. 
because every generation matters. And by building projects like this, we lose skyline. Just more, more, more. And let's follow the examples of our national parks. I don't want to have to go to museums to show my children what the marina used to look like. I think it's very important that we embrace the values of less is more. Dr. Patrick O. speaking for a Thank you, and also thank you very much to the Corps for holding the hearing here rather than Los Angeles. I'm a former member of, the, of uh, the Governor's Task Force on Offshore Oil Development. I dealt with the Corps a lot in the 70s, and we always had to do it downtown, so we very much appreciate that. Uh, we have a number of members of our club here. If you want to stand up? Okay. Actually, the club has about 80 members, so in, in any given Sunday morning, you'll see about 40, 40 of us out there. Um, I'm also uh, in the author of the first uh, textbook on environmental impact assessment uh, used in colleges throughout the country. Uh, no longer, unfortunately, but uh, things have gotten better since then. I also directed the scientific team that compiled a summary of knowledge of the Southern California Bight, which uh, uh, mapped all the ecosystems from Mexico to San Luis Obispo and was the science foundation for the creation of the Santa Barbara Channel Islands National Park. And I worked a lot with the core on that and it was with mutual respect. And like I said, I'm a retired professor from Georgia Tech. If there's any yellow jackets on your staff, hi to them. Um, first of all, I've got four points. The first one is, I don't see a need for this. As far as I can tell, and in the application itself, it was pointed out that there are empty boat slips. There is not a, there is not a demand for this particular facility. And I have seen no credible models, economic models, would show that there is going to be a surge of purchases of boats that will want to be in the water here or in dry storage here over the next 10 years. This seems to be a group of investors who think that they can use some public uh, resources to make money. It may or may not have a, uh, an economic need, but uh, as far as I can tell, there isn't one. Which means that if it does get built and there is no need, we will be stuck with a very large building with no purpose, with serious environmental impacts. Uh, secondly, this fails cost-benefit analysis, and since my book was one of the first to, to lay out cost-benefit analysis, I did one. But what I can tell, the costs of this, when you include the social and the environmental costs, far outweigh the benefits. And for that reason, and to explain that, let me point out that Dock 52 is more than a parking lot and a boat ramp. It is a community resource used through it by people from around the county. On any given Sunday morning, you'll see my club there with 30 or 40 people. You'll see other bike clubs there, many of whom are, are majority African American, as is my club. You will see groups of, of people in buses and vans coming in from Koreatown to go fishing. You will see church groups who use this as a staging area for their fundraising. This is more than a parking lot. It is, it is a community resources. I did a little survey of my own and I found that people come from at least five different congressional districts in Los Angeles to be here. They come from Limon Park, from West Adams, from East Los Angeles, from Compton, from the Valley, all over. One of the reasons they come here is because this is the only free parking lot in the marina. And there are many, many families and many, many groups that get together to come down here with their children and spend the day over on the, on the bridge over the Bayona Creek fishing, teaching your children how to fish, and they wouldn't do it if they had to pay for parking. When you look at the social benefits of Dock 52 and you begin to calculate those, and there are, and as many of you who do this know, there are ways to do that, you see that any benefits that might accrue to the 235 people who might possibly use some of the slips in, in this or some of the storage in this, there is no question it fails a cost-benefit analysis. For the same reason it fails a social benefit analysis. The social benefits accrue to, accrue to 200 people or less, depending on whether or not the facility is actually used, and to, of course to the investors. But thousands of people use Stock 52 over the year. They use it for parking so they can go in, into the, uh, uh, on the bike path. They use it for fishing. They use it for boat launching. Thousands of people use it. So when you balance that against the possible utility to 200 people with their boats, there is no question. Third, fourthly, it's a litigation magnet. As, as you will hear from uh, testimony that uh, 
later on, and also if you receive a written testimony, there are numerous violations of federal, state, and local laws in the application. All of those are points of litigation for those of us who wish to see the marina stay the way it is. And lastly, as I pointed out, there are five congressional districts whose organizations use this. And many of those congressional, many of those members of Congress have already been alerted to this. Some of those sit on the Natural Resources Committee and other committees that have oversight over the Corps of the Engineers. Many of those organizations are precisely the organizations that those members of Congress who are now up for re-election are going to asking for volunteers and for endorsements. And when they get a question that says, will you advise the Corps, you know what they're going to say. Thank you again for coming. Thank you for, for listening to us. And I really appreciate it. Next up is Jeanette Bosberg. Thank you very much to the Corps and to all the people that have shown concern and that feel proudly as strongly as I do that this is somewhat outside the realm of good government. Um, I've spent a lot of time getting acquainted with this. We're talking about the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers dealing with Dock 52, which is a parking lot, which my predecessor just talked about. Uh, we're talking about a 404 permit application without federal NEPA uh, or Federal Environmental Policy Act reviews. Uh, my objective today is somewhat unlike some of the other people probably that will be speaking. My objective is to take a look at what was be happening, what has been happening in the entire marina. There were 950 acres set aside, and they were set aside to be available to people of the county and of the world uh, at a reasonable cost and equal access to all. And what we have here is a situation where several, as my the former speaker said, there are a lot of violations, and I'd just like to go through those quickly. Um, first, the um, California Environmental Quality Act, you know, is involved in the review process, but what we need here is NEPA. We need a National Environmental Policy Act review. And that, I would call, I would say that the Bionic Wetlands is getting an EIS, or an Environmental Impact Statement, which I wanted to point out to everybody in the audience that I've passed out, of, or made available about 20 of these. And there are several components to it. And I want to make you aware that, yeah, it's a little bit complicated, and you have to put a little time into it. But the first exhibit, is an exhibit from the environmental, uh, the EPA of the United States. And what they have done as of October 16, 2015, is approved the report from the water Re State Water Resources Board saying what needs to be done in the marina. And it is really heavy duty. And what we're, what we're talking about is that there is what is called a total maximum daily load. And that means that out in, this, out in the harbor, as well in all the basins, what we have is an extreme amount of pollution, which is comprised of copper off the bottom of boats, lead, uh, there's old DDT before the marina was done. There was a lot of DDT here. And then there are other environmental toxins. And these are all mentioned. They're mentioned in the next attachment, which is called the State Water Resources Control Board Resolution as of February 6th of 2014. And that lists all kinds of things that the county has to do to remediate the problems that we already have in all of the basins and in the harbor. And um, this, and, and I want to be really clear, this, this is a very major problem. 
This is not a simple solution. Uh, there's a life of the line. I'm going to just point this out here. There's, there's a blue, this is the Biona wetlands, and this is the project in red, and this is the boat yard next door. Well, right here to the right of the proposed project is a blue line. This is a channel that is 50 foot wide. Turn it. 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 Turn and it's coming across and it's going under Lincoln and it's going, it, it comes out under the parking lot at both, you know, at the uh, dock 52. And it runs across and actually if you go over to Fiji Way and you park at dock 52 and you go over there, you'll see that there is running water there that comes there in two different ways. One way, is because it is coming from the dirty, dirty polluted water of Basin Age. And then it is going and polluting waters of the United States, which are the Biona wetlands. And I want to be really clear that this is a major issue. We have a major issue all the way through. Fish are being born with really strange anomalies. And that's not an accident. These pollutants are really hard on the estuary and the, the fish and other wildlife that live here in the habitat. And so what I want to be clear about is that what this project is proposing is to not only ignore the fact that they have been ordered by the State Water Resources Board and the EPA, which I've handed out the information, I'm not asking you to believe me, I'm saying go back to the initial documents. Go back to the attachment that I put there that says what is an EIS, an Environmental Impact Study, and why is it so important. Use your intellect. Think about this. What they're asking to do is to take something that is already waters of the United States being polluted by water that's coming from one of the basins. But they're not only doing that, but they're proposing to bring in three other, 350 other boats that will interfere and bring more pollutants. But that's not the worst of it. <laughs> that's only the beginning. <laughs> Ma'am, we have exceeded our time. Do we have a copy of the do we have a copy of the appendix? Oh, yeah. Is that correct? Uh, can I just show one thing, please? Uh, these are the pilings that they're going to put down. These are 60 feet. They are 4 feet in diameter, 60 feet tall, and 12 feet above the water line. And there are, they, he's saying something different, but the way I read this, is that there are 76 posts, four feet wide and 72 feet high, that have to be driven in somehow, and they're two inches thick, two inch pipe. And you tell me how that is going to affect the wildlife and the habitat in that area. It's really amazing to me that this would even be <coughs> on the table and considered. And I asked you to look at those 20, those pages that I've given you. Ma'am, the, the pages that uh, you've referenced in your talk, do we have a copy of those? You have Okay, great. I agree. Thank you.